Greetings to you, friends and brethren around the world. Jesus Christ is the head of his church, and he is in total control of it. By late 1985, unknown to Herbert Armstrong, the late apostle and pastor general of the Worldwide Church of God, Jesus had the name Joseph Takach Sr. placed into Mr. Armstrong's mind. It was Jesus Christ's decision to appoint Joseph Tkach Sr. as Pastor General upon Mr. Armstrong's death. You see, Jesus required a man prone to malicious lies and who would be instrumental in the destroying of all the true doctrines of the worldwide Church of God, thereby bringing about an apostasy. So on Tuesday night, January the 7th, 1986, in the presence of the Director of Church Administration, Joseph Tkach, and his personal aide, Aaron Dean, along with his legal counsel, Mr. Ralph Helge, who was on a phone hookup, Mr. Armstrong, via teleconference, named his successor as Pastor General, only Pastor General, to the 11-man Council of Elders who were in the Hall of Administration on the Ambassador College campus that night. The 12th man, Mr. Diba Apartian, arrived late. Now, how can I say that Jesus wanted Mr. Dukach to be appointed? Well, in this series of videos, they are liars in the Church of God. I will prove it from the Scripture. In part one, I will explain why I said, you see, Jesus required a man prone to malicious lies who would be instrumental in destroying all the true doctrines of the worldwide Church of God and bring about an apostasy. Greetings to you, friends and brethren around the world. Mr. Joe Tkach Sr. was not alone in causing the destruction of the doctrines of the Worldwide Church of God headquartered in Pasadena, California. He had his staff, as well as most of the ministers of the Church of God at that time, evangelists, pastors, and various other ministers. They were all involved and did nothing to stop the destruction. My wife and I were on campus in 1990 in Pasadena for the graduation week, and we attended the refresher program. I heard and witnessed what was taking place there, and it was shocking to me. You see, within a month of Takach's appointment in 1986, Mr. Larry Salyer, now a minister in the split-off Church of God, a worldwide association, or COGWA, was the first to acknowledge Tkach as an apostle, an office Mr. Armstrong never ordained him to. Soon thereafter, all the ministers and members were conned into believing that he was an apostle. Now, why did this happen? Well, after the death of Mr. Armstrong, the era of the church known as Philadelphia came to an end. Came to an end, contrary to what many believe. Now, with the appointment of Tkach, the next era, the seventh Laodicea began, and Jesus Christ is not in that era, not in that church. Please go read Revelation 3 verse 20. However, all the ministers today, this 21st century, refuse to acknowledge the biblical fact. The evangelists and pastors who are supposed to be biblically sound and educated refuse to go to the prophets 
to see why the church of God suffered an apostasy and suffered a scattering worldwide. Rather, these ministers, seeing the membership flee in those early years from the destruction of the church, from the destruction of what the Tkachas and they themselves were party to, these cowardly ministers chased after the fleeing sheep. Yes, chased after the members to gather them into various church groups, thereby assuring themselves of a salary from their tithes and offerings. The Apostle Paul stated in Hebrews 13 verse 8, brethren, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. This same Jesus held a conference with all his staff of angels or hosts a while before Mr. Armstrong died. It was there at that conference with Jesus Christ and his angels, it was decided to have Mr. Tkach be appointed and the rest of the ministry to be deluded which eventually caused the church of God to scatter worldwide. Let the prophet Michayahu explain about that conference in 1 Kings 22 verses 19 to 23. And he said, Hear you therefore the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne and all the angels or the host of heaven standing by him on his right hand and on his left. And the Lord said, Who shall persuade Ahab that he may go up and fall or die at Ramoth Gilead? And one said on this manner, and another said on that manner. And there came forth a spirit and stood before the Lord and said, I will persuade him. And the Lord said unto him, Wherewith? And he said, I will go forth and I will be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And he said, You shall persuade him and prevail also. Go forth and do so. And therefore, behold, the Lord God, Jesus Christ, has put a lying spirit in the mouth of all these prophets. Yes, in all the ministers. And the Lord has spoken evil concerning you. Talking to Ahab, talking to the church of God today. That's exactly what happened to the worldwide church of God. Jesus allowed a lying spirit to be put into the mouth of Joseph the Karch and all the ministry. And that spirit was Satan. Then we have the same situation in Job chapter 1, starting in verse 6. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. Another conference. And Satan came also among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, Where are you coming from? Where do you come from? And Satan answered the Lord and said, Oh, from going to and fro in the earth and fro from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Have you considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that fears God and hates evil? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, does Job fear you, fear God for nothing? Have you not put a hedge around about him and about his house and about all that he has on every side? And have you not blessed the work of his hands and his substance is increased in the land? But put forth your hand now and touch all that he has and he will curse you to your face. Now notice this, brethren, notice this. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that Job has is in your power. Only upon himself put not forth your hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord and did what he did. The truth always exposes lies. The leaders of the scattered churches today don't worry about the force they cannot see. They don't worry about that. God, they don't see, they don't worry about it. Therefore, they cannot prove what they are doing is right. Jesus tells them exactly what he told the Jews in John 8, verses 42 to 47. If God were your father, you would love me, for I proceed forth and come from God. Neither came I of myself, but God sent me. Why do you not understand my speech? 
even because you cannot hear my word. You are of your father, the devil, and the lusts of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. And because I tell you the truth, yes, I am telling you the truth, brethren, you believe me not. Which of you convinced me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do you not believe me? He that is of God hears God's words. You therefore hear them not, because you are not of God. I will continue this series in part two. They are liars in the church of God. This is Michael Venish saying goodbye brethren and goodbye friends.